There's no better way to interview Sid Mead than to be sitting in a classic car, <laughs> especially this one. Yeah. Because you, you have a little bit of history with this car. 57 Mercury Turnpike Cruiser. That's right. And when you went to Art Center, this was in your, I guess, your first term, you did a rendering of this car? Yes. Yep. Why did you choose this car to do a rendering? Well, I'd seen the pictures in the magazines mm -hmm. of the show car. The show car was the Mercury XM-1, right. the Turnpike Cruiser. Yeah. And I said, so this car was made uh, two, mo two, two model years, the um, production model version of the show car. Right, right. And I said, I've got to see this thing. <laughs> so we went to the Mercury dealership in Beverly Hills, and I walked around this car, and I thought, this is just astonishing. <laughs> Spectacular. There's not a vestige of European anything. Yeah. It's pure. American design. Boisterous American design. It's long, wide, and low. You could, the average person could stand along the side of the car yeah. and put their hand over the, <laughs> over the roof. Right. Yeah. Well, it, it firmed up my ambition, yes. Yeah. I said, if this is where we are now, I'm being trained to go beyond this. And uh, I thought, this, I've, I've found my niche. Did, of course, did, since then I've worked on every every mobility platform made by man, yeah. from bicycles to uh, 747 interiors for heads of state. But uh, but the car industry, I've done vehicles and and cruise ships and super yachts and motorboats and so motorcycles. Car, cars always been your favorite. Always been my favorite. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We bought this. I think in 2004, something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Astonishing. Amazing. Yeah. What, uh, of all the cars that you've worked on with, if from the manufacturers to the cars and movies, is there one project that stood out as being your favorite that you enjoyed the most? Well, I designed a full functional uh, show car for Ford Motor Company. Mm -hmm. It was a pickup truck of the future, fully operational, had air conditioning and radio and the whole nine, whole nine yards. <clears throat> and uh, that was really an accomplishment because I could use all my skills that I learned at Art Center in terms of forming a, a, a windshield and designing the body. It was made in steel. Mm -hmm. And that was really an exciting accomplishment yeah. at the time. I can't see him. You can't see him? Okay. Yeah, I'm looking. Uh, the whole room full of flowers. And I said, you know what you guys do? Okay, so that's, be here. that's sharp. Yeah. It'll be about that wide at the most. Oh, you do it? Yeah. And about that close. That's better. Yeah. Well, I started drawing when I was about three. So, by the time I went to Art Center, starting in, in uh, September of 56, graduated in June of 59 with great distinction. I knew how to draw very, very well. People, animals, shade, uh, contrast, proportion, picture, you know, I knew how to do that. The concept end of the design business uh, 
was what, essentially what I learned of how to do that quickly, how to sum up your idea into picture form very quick, and then how to learn how to learn how to work on a schedule. So you get everything done by Wednesday if that was the deadline. That's really what I learned, and to learn how to use gouache. So that was 60 years ago. And gouache is still my favorite media for full color art. Because back then, if, if you're as old as I am, you remember, everything was photographed and printed, CMYK. And gouache leaves a gloss-free surface when it's dry. Photographs beautifully. So concept art became the linchpin for successfully solving problems, for figuring out what the problem really is in the first place. And that's been my, my procedure really all, my whole career. Well, the inspiration is the knowledge that you can solve the problem. And you don't get scared. It's like they teach, <laughs> they teach wire walkers. Don't look down. <laughs> and I made a comment, one of the presentations I did, I said, my stage in my career, if the client doesn't like it, they're wrong. <laughs> Everybody clapped and they said, it's easy for you to say. Well, I said, yes, but it's taken 50 years to be able to say that. I'm very proud of it because it's a result of being dedicated to what you do, to being careful, to being good at remembering and, and bringing the, the full vocabulary of what you learn as you go along into each new project, but influencing a lot of people. And I've had people literally tell me that I changed their life. And that makes me very, very proud. That is my legacy. Mr. Mead, where do you get your ideas? And the answer is, of course, being working commercially, you get them from the problem. A client calls, you get a commission, you find out what their problem is, and sometimes I've had to invent a return rationale for them to approve because they didn't know what the problem was. But I can look at somebody's portfolio and almost within a very, very short time hit on what they're not doing right I can, I can recognize the, either the aptitude or the thinking procedure that produced that particular piece and that gives me a clue as to what to tell them. I get from you and I've always gotten from you for the past almost 40 years now that any one of the things that you've designed you could take to a build process. Would that be a fair assessment? Well because I, I was an industrial design major. I know how things are made. I do keep up with the sort of the leading edge of manufacturing technology. And of course now the latest thing in operation all over the world is additive manufacturing or the layering process of printing. And uh, so I know how things are made and how things are made determines how they look. The wing spars for a jet fighter, for instance, are in one piece. And that wasn't possible at the early stages of the Industrial Revolution. Then techniques advance and things are made a certain way because you can do it that way. And so all my designs, conceptual, uh, look like they could be made because you can synthesize that, that design process for anything. It doesn't have to be real anymore, it can be theoretical, but you can synthesize that design process and come up with a conceptual design that looks absolutely real for the world that it's existing in as a picture.
nature is mathematical in a lot of ways. The, the spiral in a seashell is, is mathematical. The, the, uh, the mental brought, there's mental brought sets, there's two sets of, uh, of um, uh, patterns, and nature uses that for everything that's a repeat pattern. An oak tree, every leaf is different, but you recognize it any instantly as an oak leaf. Uh, lobster ravioli. Uh, cobalt, well, blue. Um, oh God, the decay blue. Cerulean. Cherenkov blue. Cherenkov blue. Favorite city is uh, Torino, Italy. Why? Because the people are, are Italian. Great pasta. And the it's an industrial city. But the edge is cultured. Uh, Milan is, is sort of the Paris of Italy, and, and it's a little bit stiffer and formal. Torino is casual, but it's, uh, it's the heart of industrial Italy. Concept of uh, John Berkey, who's passed away. What, what really pisses you off, Sid? Uh, idiots in traffic. <laughs> Always remember everything you see because here's the trigger. If you're a designer, concept and then into actual specialized, more specialized areas, you, you have to use your own built-in catalog of how things look and why, and that's, that's your, that's your uh, well of information. Sydney Incorporated will go on, Roger Servet, my partner, is running Obligon and Sid Meeting. Sid Meeting will, will end as a corporation that's coming end of this year, 50 years, and uh, the promotion of the artwork that's been done and projects and the visibility will, will be ongoing as a licensed extension of what's happened already. I'm most thankful for just being able to do it all these years. I'm very fortunate. Both of us live here in Pasadena beautiful house and we're we're very lucky people